Hey fam, how are you? I hope you guys are all doing well. So listen, today I want to talk to you guys about rejection. And if you have dealt with it in your past or if you're dealing with it right now, I just want to give, you know, a perspective, my perspective on possibly why it is happening and hopefully give you some encouragement on um, where you're going. So, you know, I've dealt with a good bit of rejection in my life, whether it was from my family, from friends, from work, um, in dating, like you name it, <laughs> I have dealt with rejection, right? And after a while, you know, you start to be able to just, you know, handle it, you know? And I believe the purpose that God is doing in you and in myself is, you know, strengthening us for where we're going. You can't go into whatever God is leading you into and you just completely fall apart <laughs> the first time someone tells you no or the first time, you know, a door gets closed on you. You know, you have to, you know, you got to be bold and stand up to that situation and say, you're going to, you know, you're going to hear me. I'm not done talking yet. <laughs> um, and so just know that, you know, your rejection today is going to be, you know, what is going to be needed for where God is sending you. And we don't always know like, where is this going or why is this happening? But trust me, at some point, you're going to look back over your life and see exactly why this has worked out for you. And so I want to read from um, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12. Mm, I want to do 1 Corinthians 12, 18. Um, let's see. 18, 18 through 20. Um, but in fact, God has placed the parts, wait a minute, wait a minute, 12 verses 18, did I read that right? Um, yes, so 18, <laughs> sorry you guys. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. 21, I'm going to you know, take it down a little further. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And so, you know, when I read that, it makes me think about rejection because there are parts of the body that you may not even put a whole lot of thought into. You know, like your pinky toe. <laughs> you don't probably put a lot of thought into it until that pinky toe hurts right? But your right hand, if you're right-handed, you probably put a lot of, you know, emphasis and honor to it. And you probably care for it more because it is needed more than the pinky toe. But when I think about rejection, you know, it hurts when it's being done to you. But then later you find yourself utilizing that skill set because now, when you're faced with opposition, you're able to handle it without a whole lot of emotional um, baggage with it, a lot of turmoil in your mind with it, because God has strengthened you 
in this area. And now you can almost look at that rejection like, okay, well, that door closed. Let me go knock on this door. <laughs> and you sleep well at night. You know, it just kind of rolls off of you. And if somebody tells you no, you're like, okay, but why? You know, and you give another reason on why they should say yes. And that's that where you become a little more tenacious about yourself. And I believe that God is wanting a body, his body of Christ to be bold. And you can't be bold, just, just wake up and here I am. Some of this is about being tested and tried. Some of this that we're going through has to strengthen us. You know, I think there are so many parts of my life that has been either dealing with some form of disappointment, some form of rejection. But when I tell you it has, it has worked to my benefit so that it has given me an opportunity to grow beyond what I even knew I could do. And you won't know the, the greater sides of who God has created you to be until he pushes you. You know, um, <laughs> when I was growing up, the way they taught you how to swim sometimes was just shoved you into the water, uh, the deep end typically too, right? You gonna, you gonna swim or drown that day. And of course, somebody's on the sideline watching, making sure you don't drown, but you figure out a way to keep your head above water and to make it to the edge. Um, mad or not, you're going to make it to the edge, right? And so, you know, if you're dealing with rejection, try to not um, discount that situation too much because it is, it's going to hurt, you know, initially when it's happening, whether it's by family, whether it's friends, a job, um, a business opportunity, whatever that rejection is, it's going to sting a little bit. But the next time that you go through something, you're going to find yourself being bolder, being a little stronger. And you can't get there by someone always, you know, rubbing you <laughs> and patting you on their on they shoulder like you're a little baby, you know. Nah, they're going to shove you in the deep and say you need to swim. And so sometimes I truly believe that God puts us in the deep and he watches us to make sure we don't drown from it. And then when he sees that we swim over to the edge and we are able to climb out and we made it and now we know how to swim. And that's what God wants to see. He takes us from level to level to glory to glory. And you can't be a soldier. <laughs> you can't be a soldier for God because you, you, you're going to have to know how to strap up your boots you don't have to know how to deal with rejection. And I believe the days that we're living in, we're all going to be tested and tried so that we can grow and be the, the type of Christians for this time, for this era. This is an era not like our grandparents' era. This era is, is you, you got to be able to put on your full armor and come out and be ready. And so just be encouraged um, and just try to just breathe, <laughs> breathe through the rejection. It does get easier. Um, and you do sleep at night after a few of them. Um, and if you've dealt with a lifetime of them, you probably don't even get phased. You just keep going and ask the next person. All you need is one door to open, one yes. And so that's what God wants. He doesn't want you to give up so quickly. He doesn't want you to shrink and to fall out and to cry and to give up. He wants you to stand up to it and be bold and go get what's yours, all right? So be encouraged. Don't worry about the rejection. You just need one yes and God has your back. You got angels assigned, assigned to your life to make sure that you succeed. And if the door closes, it wasn't your door. Keep walking until that next one opens, all right? You guys take care and I will see you on the next one.